2016, entrepreneur and SpaceX owner Elon Musk unveiled the Interplanetary Transport System, a method by which SpaceX eventually hopes to transport 100 people to Mars per flight. Using traditional methods of spaceflight, this would have been prohibitively expensive, but SpaceX intends to make use of economies of scale and revolutionary new materials to create a self-sustaining human colony on Mars, and make it possible to relocate for anyone who wants to. Musk's plan is untested and currently in need of funding on the order of about $10 billion, but the engineering behind it is good. By reusing hardware several times and refueling in orbit, SpaceX has engineered an elegant and feasible solution to the problem of transporting large amounts of cargo and passengers on a realistic time frame and for an achievable budget. What happens when people actually get to Mars is not really a question SpaceX is looking to answer. But if you want to make a civilization on Mars possible, the most important problem to solve first is the problem of getting there in the first place. The interplanetary transport system is made up of two parts, the booster and the spaceship. At the bottom of the booster are 42 Raptor engines, powerful and efficient methane burning engines outputting three times as much thrust as the Saturn V moon rocket. With this many engines, the booster will be able to lose several engines at a time and still successfully fly to orbit. By mass producing these engines and using newly developed advanced production methods, SpaceX hopes to be able to significantly lower the cost per unit, lowering the cost of the whole system. After launching, the spaceship separates itself from the booster and lifts itself to a stable parking orbit. At the same time, the booster decelerates and propulsively lands itself back on the launch pad, where a tanker vehicle is loaded onto it and launched. The tanker docks with and refuels the spaceship. This process is then repeated up to five times. Once it has been fully fueled, the spaceship sets itself on a course to Mars, enters the Martian atmosphere, and lands on the surface around two months later. Once on the surface, the system makes use of a chemical reaction, the Sabatier reaction. By reacting carbon dioxide, which makes up almost 96% of Mars's thin atmosphere, together with hydrogen, which is abundant in the form of water in the Martian soil, methane is produced, along with water and energy. The methane produced is used to refuel the spaceship, which can launch itself to orbit and back to Earth due to Mars's low gravity and thin atmosphere. Once this system has been tried and tested, SpaceX will send larger and larger fleets of vehicles every two years, when Mars and Earth's orbits are in the optimal positions. By sending multiple ships at the same time, the fleet becomes much safer, as if there is a serious problem on one vehicle, passengers can be transferred to other ships. The first flights of the ITS will carry around a dozen passengers, and mostly cargo, but eventually Elon Musk wants a ticket to Mars to cost as little as one or two hundred thousand dollars, the median house price in the United States, with the goal of creating a self-sustaining city on Mars. If this infrastructure was extended with refueling stations, the ships could travel to and land anywhere in the solar system, including the moon and even the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The interplanetary transport system is unique among orbital spacecraft in that it extensively incorporates carbon fiber into its structure. This makes the entire structure of the ship much lighter, about 30% lighter compared to using the more traditional aluminium lithium. With the ship's structure weighing much less, the effective efficiency of the system is vastly improved. Until recently, carbon fiber tanks could not store liquid-cooled densified methane propellant without cracking or leaking, but SpaceX has successfully constructed a prototype fuel tank which has so far passed preliminary testing. This means that SpaceX is already well underway in solving this crucial engineering problem. The Raptor engine is the second key part to the system. Operating under an extremely high chamber pressure, the engine performs with a high thrust-to-weight ratio, burning dense and cold methane fuel. The engine is even more efficient when operating in a vacuum, as it will on the spaceship. Previously, the business model needed to make flights to Mars available to the average person simply did not exist, mainly because space travel has until recently been restricted to government agencies using expensive, single-purpose spacecraft for very particular goals. But this is a problem for which the solution can be engineered, as long as resources are spent on trying to do so. The first obstacle to developing the interplanetary transport system is money. During his presentation, Musk was pretty vague about how the ITS would be funded, citing an approximate development cost of $10 billion, and saying that a public-private partnership would be the best way to raise the money. $10 billion is a lot of money, but it's definitely achievable. If the price estimate is accurate, that's just over half of NASA's yearly budget in total. Spread that cost over 10 years, and the price becomes much more feasible. People flying through space are subjected to radiation which can increase the risk of cancer and other illnesses. However, as this trip to Mars only lasts about two months, the radiation experienced by the crew is within safety limits. In the event of a solar flare, the passengers can gather behind the ship's water tank, which makes an effective shield. Scientists at NASA have been creating more efficient radiation-resistant materials, like hydrogenated boron nitride nanotubes. 
This material could be used to upholster spaceships and habitats to make them more radiation resistant without taking up valuable mass. Also, on Mars, habitats and living spaces can be built underground or be surrounded by artificial magnetic fields or radiation resistant materials. However, this isn't really SpaceX's problem. SpaceX specializes in launch vehicles and spacecraft. Other companies, like Bigelow Aerospace, are in the business of creating habitats. Radiation aside, Mars is a surprisingly habitable but extreme place. Its day lasts 24 hours and 39 minutes. Temperature on the surface ranges between a high of 20 degrees Celsius and minus 150 degrees Celsius, which is cold but much more temperate than places like the Moon. Mars has a surface area roughly equal to all the land on Earth, and the gravity is about 40% that of Earth's, which humans should be able to adapt to with little effort. SpaceX has been the subject of some skepticism following a recent launch pad explosion, but SpaceX's track record is actually 93%, just 2% lower than the industry average. In the future, SpaceX will most likely continue to have setbacks, as will all the world's other space agencies. When it comes to space, failure and learning from failures is a part of the job, but crew safety is a top priority. A big emphasis of SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule is its launch escape system, which will fly the capsule and its passengers to safety in the event of an accident. We should not wait until all the problems on Earth have been solved before we go to Mars. There will always be problems on Earth, and there will be problems on Mars as well. The skills and knowledge we gain from solving the considerable technical challenge of settling the most inhospitable environment we can will be essential to solving problems on Earth in the future. Progress happens and society benefits when we push the limits of what is possible. Finally, even though the interplanetary transport system has little funding behind it as of yet, its most fundamental design issues are well on their way to being solved. What's amazing is that SpaceX says it can develop a heavy lift rocket that can be mass produced, is reusable, and is relatively lightweight. And even if no one wanted to go to Mars, the existence of such a rocket is a major game changer in the space industry. SpaceX intends to encourage innovation and development in the space industry by creating a higher demand for space equipment as well as strong competitors, transforming a previously restrictive, expensive, and small market into one that is expansive, relatively inexpensive, and open. In the 2020s and 30s, the space industry might become mass market in the same way computers did in the 1980s and 90s. And if SpaceX goes bankrupt and this system never gets off the ground, there's nothing stopping anyone giving some engineers $10 billion, some blueprints, and saying, make me one like this.